If you know anybody that you feel would like this webinar, make sure you send them the link. Hi everybody, my name is Brianna Wise and I'm a stylist based here in Los Angeles, California. And today I wanted to do a webinar with my friend Lex so that you guys can get a better understanding of what it's like to style personal press styling and then costume for films and TV. And I felt like she would be perfect because she is in film, TV, and you've seen her in a lot of places. You've seen her on The Purge, Tony Braxton, um, Training Day, and she's also going to be in some movies and films coming up this, well, after all this quarantine stuff happened. <laughs> so let me introduce you guys. This is Lex. Hey, y'all. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me, Bree. This is fun. It's like Kiki. Cute. Something fun. <laughs> I have to do since we're sitting in the house. Right. <laughs> so, okay, guys, I'm going to ask her a couple questions. And then if you have any questions, we'll save them for the end. You can leave it in the chat or you can leave them in the Q&A tab. And if you're just tuning in, make sure to just let us know where you are, your Instagram handle, um, so that we can see you and know that you're in here. This is super active. Hey, T. Tina in here. Hey, Tina. I know. <laughs> Super intimate, too, because, you know, a lot of things are going on right now. So let's get started. Okay, so let's first question. What was yep. your journey into becoming an actress? Well, um, I started out as a dancer. I was a dancer my entire life, um, beginning at the age of three, doing ballet, modern, tap, jazz, all of those things that children dancers do. But then as I got older, it got a little more focused and um, I ended up dancing, being a dance major. I was a dance physical therapy major to be specific at Drexel University in Philly. Um, I stayed there for three years. Um, I, I did incredible things with them. I, I danced at Disney World, I danced in I would come into California in the summers and dance at Debbie Allen Dance Academy. Um, I went to Singapore to dance on behalf of Drexel um, and the U.S. in what was like an international youth exchange um, competition. And that, the Singapore actually was my last time on stage. Um, and that was a very interesting time for me. I basically... When you sometimes when you grow up doing the same thing forever, yeah, you just it gets it, you you start to lose. Well, with me, I think I started to lose the love because I I think I realized that it wasn't it was a choice, but also it was like I was handed a handful of extracurricular activities as a child, and then I just stuck with this one and yep. just kind of ran with it. Right. But I don't as I got as I became an adult, I don't know if I truly was in love with that thing right what i did figure out and discover was that i was in love with performing but it wasn't necessarily in the form of dance um and i wanted to figure out how a way to perform for the rest of my life and that's how i found acting because with acting there is no age cap there's no um you know unfortunately in the dance community when you get a certain age your body don't move the way it used to. Uh, casting directors don't book the, you know, book you the same way because you're not as young. You're not keeping up. Or, and a lot of, and a lot of what I saw were amazing dancers that I had looked up to becoming choreographers or they become studio owners. Right. And those two paths weren't really um, something I could see myself being passionate about. So again, to answer my own question, what can I do to perform for the rest of my life? It was acting. I, I love making the joke, like they always gonna need an old black grandma on somebody's <laughs> movie or show. I can literally work until I, I pass out. Um, and, and I think it's also just beautiful, the idea of living forever through your media. Um, that our kids, kids and beyond will be able to see me, hear me, watch how I walk, how I move, how I dress um, years from now, beyond when I'm, when I'm no longer here. And I think something about that is really beautiful. You can really live forever through your choice of media and mine just happens to be acting. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that you um, studied it 
um, got some mentorship in, you know, in order to find the path that you really wanted to take with acting? Yes. Um, so when I left Drexel my third year in, um, I worked at home for a little bit. I went back to Baltimore, worked in a hair salon, mm -hmm. got my money right, and moved to New York. And New York is where I studied acting for film at New York Film Academy, which is a conservatory um, specific to whatever your major would be. So right. some people were there for photography, some were there for directing and so on and so forth. Um, so I did a program there for about a year and a half-ish. Um, and I worked, also once I was finished that program, I was working at Sephora. <laughs> and then um, it was complicated for me to figure out like what, how to, I, I couldn't get beyond what I learned in school. Um, yeah. so it was like, great, I did all the studying. So how do I book the job? And it just right. kind of was staying stagnant. So that's when I made the transition to LA, just to try something new, be in a different environment, actively look for a manager, actively look for an agent. Mm -hmm. um, but I definitely found my way, once I was in LA, I found my way into a few um, acting schools, just something to, to brush up on, just to make sure I'm, I'm exercising. Um, one of them was the late Dustin Felder. I went to his acting studio. He recently passed away. Um, and, and a few other people, I, I went and studied with them a little bit, um, but I found that my best training also came from experience. Mm -hmm. So what helped me even further um, beyond just the classroom environment, I started auditioning for plays and I was doing stage plays and I did about four of them um, when I first moved here. Mm -hmm. And so that was like my exercise, that was my way of getting my feet wet and also meeting other actors in a new city. Um, so, but coupling the, the school with actual experience on stage and then just watching a lot of films, mm -hmm. that's pretty much my, my level of ed education. That's where I got all my education from. Okay, so cool. Let's go into the more fashion aspect of things. So as far as I guess your personal style. Do you feel your journey is a representation of that? Because you love to use colors, but then sometimes you love to be sleek. And then sometimes you love to just be chill, like a tomboy. So would you say your journey um, throughout the years leading into becoming an actress has represented your personal style? Yeah, because I feel like my journey has been all over the place. The, <laughs> my style is all over the place. I, I'm very much that person who's like, depending on how I wake up today, mm -hmm. I might want to be punky or mm -hmm. I might want to be like little like tight clothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> then I might want to just be straight tomboy. Then I want to be eclectic. And then I want to be earthy. Like, it just really <laughs> depends. You literally do every different <laughs> style. <laughs> exactly. So, it, yeah, it just, I'm kind of free-flowing when it comes to that. I don't, I don't know if I have the right to put a title or a stamp on exactly what my style is. It's very eclectic. It's a mixture of a lot of things. And I think that's also a reflection of just me being... Uh, actor playing so many different types of people right. with different backgrounds and so I pull from a lot of a lot of just knowledge of different cultures too um that and I just I like mixing them up a little bit yeah so, yeah okay so as far as your personal style and how you represent yourself in the industry what would you say is the mindset shift that you need in order to remain positive I mean, free flowing, and I guess does your style represent that? So it's like two, 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 two questions. Two questions. So with the first one, say the, say the first one again, so I make sure I'm answering the right thing. What do you feel the mindset is that you need to maintain a positive role or image in the industry? So I put it together. I mean, if you, if you, if anyone wants to maintain a positive role, they have to have a positive mindset. Mm -hmm. Just point blank. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's you. 
on one end, you want to make sure you represent yourself well. On the other end, you don't have to care as much as what what other people think about you style wise. And I think that's the cool thing about artists. Like artists leave with self expression. Um, and so it's, it's style for me in real life is my opportunity to share a little bit about me as a person because with acting, I'm never me. I'm always somebody else. Unlike a musician where recording artists and musicians they can dress them and, and the audience their fan base gets to know them for them and it's cool and it's unique and it's you know, they can do crazy shit with their hair and that's okay and wear long ass nails and that's okay i can't do that yeah. so in between i do love to um have that moment of just like self-expression i definitely want to um but in a positive light so i don't want to mislead or misconstrue what it is that i'm doing like i wouldn't I wouldn't portray myself as the actor as if I'm a recording artist because then that's it, it can see it can come off a little misleading if that makes sense. So I wouldn't show up and it's no shade obviously but it, I wouldn't show up dressed like sweetie on a carpet because I'm not promoting that's not what I'm promoting. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so you kind of have to like keep that in mind while I love self expression and want to do what I want to do. There is an element to it too. It's like, okay, but I'm an actor. I, don't, I personally don't need to be um, too revealing in my choices outside of acting mm -hmm. um, because I also don't want that to conflict with work. Because all of this is work. It's, you know, if this was a regular, if this was a corporate industry, you know, it's, it's like that example, what you put on Facebook travels with you at work. It right. just does. Right. So um, I have to keep that in mind, even within my my want to express myself. Yeah, that's a good one. All right, okay, if you're tuning in, make sure you let us know where you are and where you're from, your Instagram handle as well. And if you have any questions, we'll save them until the end of the call. Um, you can leave it in the chat or you can also leave it in the Q&A. And again, we're here with Lex Scott Davis and she's an actress letting us know her personal style. And now we're gonna go more into how it is to style an actress, whether it be press, personal or costume design for TV and film. So the next question is, from your perspective, what would you say is the difference between working with a stylist as a fashion stylist, personal style towards you, and then working with a costume designer for TV and film? Um, yeah, okay, so that's, that's kind of similar to um, my previous answer because mm -hmm. It's that whole, like, how do you want to represent yourself when you're not being a character? Right. And that's really important. That's a really important conversation to have with your personal stylist, too, just to build that rapport and so that they can understand exactly what you're going for. Because, again, it can be confusing when they see you as an actor and you're all these different characters. Right. So, like, I can't tell exactly what your style is. So, we got to figure that out now when it's just you. And what does that even mean? Who do you want to be? Who, who are you for in real life? Um, so that's the personal styling. Um, on set, completely different scenario. On set, it's important for, and I think for anyone watching this who wants to, who is aspiring to be a stylist, and I'm assuming most of you are because you wouldn't have been here if not. When you're styling for television or film, you are storytelling. You are a part of the component that is a, a major puzzle that is to tell a specific story. So your character that you're dressing may not be the most fabulous person, and that is okay. It's not your job to make this person look fabulous. Your, per your job is to make this person come alive off of this piece of paper called the script. Right. And if that person is a truck driver in the middle of Texas. That's who you're styling today, and that's who <laughs> he has to be that day. It's, it's not fly um, unless – specified um yeah. but it's you really have to remove the um fashion component out of the equation if you're not styling a character who is a fashionable person um because the average the average person in these stories may not know how to dress right. or may not have resources to these amazing brands and these amazing clothes and where would that character dress right where do you get their clothes from is it Target? Is it Nordstrom's? It could be both. It could be 
a huge variety. So I think it's really important for um, when discovering in yourself, like, okay, I want to be a stylist. Okay, you want to be a personal or do you want to be a costumer? Right. This two is two different things talking about here. Right, exactly. So that's a good place to start with whomever is listening if, if you're trying to figure out exactly which, which way you want to go. And then once you figure that out, it's like, okay, let's start to dig into stories. Next time you watch a film or watch your favorite TV show, why is this person dressing this way? Does that, does that outfit enhance this character? If this character is silent and they don't say anything, can you tell who they are by what they have on? Mm -hmm. That's also really important too. Color comp composition is important too. So with TV and film, a lot of the um, costume designers are partnering and make sure they're teaming up with the director of photography, right. the directors, the writers, so that we all are on the same page about who is reflected through this wardrobe. So that's a huge difference. Yeah. And we can talk about that all day, but... So last week we had Antoinette on here, which yeah. you also work with for Superfly, the film Superfly. Yeah. And she started off with fashion styling and then went into costume design. And she kind of touched on the exact same thing that you said. And I think it was cool that she was able to do both in that film. Right. So right. How would you say your style was reflected on that? My style was so interesting on Superfly. Um, I think the character was Georgia. Mm -hmm. And she's from Atlanta mm -hmm. and she is in a polyamorous relationship. So that's three things right there. That's like, boom. Okay. 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 How does that type of person look? How does that type of person dress? Um, <laughs> so we had a, me and that's when I had a lot of fun with this character. And it's crazy because we started off with one closet. And then by the time the, the film unfolded, we ended up in a whole different closet. And again, that's because once you, you the costumer has their idea, and once they present it to the director, the director can start making some edits. And so that's what happened. So the director made a couple of edits and we she went shopping again, went back to the drawing board, came back, we mixed some of the old with some of the new and we developed Georgia. Um, and she was tight, everything tight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, heels all the time, big jewelry all the time, big hair. Um, so fabulous. <laughs> super, super, super fabulous. Very Atlanta, um, which is also the other cool part too. We filmed in Atlanta, thus Antoinette's shopping was done in Atlanta. So it made sense for what she was wearing. She got out of the city where Georgia was represented. So, um, that was, yeah, that was, she was a cool, very, very cool girl to play and cool girl to uh, dress. Yeah. She was, um, because of the two relationships, it was important for Antoinette to figure out, okay, if there's two women in this, in this polyamorous relationship, what, it, what makes them different? What makes them both essential to this, um, this threesome? Right. So right. why are they different? How are they different? How do they balance each other out? So while I was funky in one way, the other girlfriend was funky in a completely different, a whole other way. Different colored wigs. Um, yeah, she did have a couple different colors. Yeah, different colored wigs. She had, um, her clothes were a little more revealing. Her clothes were a little more on the, both were fabulous, but hers was more on the street side of fabulous and mine was on the like, pretty Atlanta glam mm -hmm fabulous so then that's another conversation too like who are you if two characters are often seen together are they similar or are they different and how are they different or how are they similar so then we have to figure out how do they contrast and what they're wearing right that's good I know I jumped off topic a little bit but this question kind of already is answered um but it has to do with when you're being styled for press so being styled for press, right, carpet appearances, um, or even awards, press, what would you say is the considering points that you make sure to tell your stylist? Um, so, well, sometimes I like to lead with what mood I think I'm in for that event. <laughs> um, it depends on the event. It depends on if this is formal. It depends on if it's a little more fun. 
Um, I know we did one for people. Um, yeah. That was so much fun. That was one of my favorite mm-hmm. outfits that you styled for me because that was like a cocktail event. You know, like, and so I got to express, you know, have a little flair in my outfit. And was, the shirt was like kind of similar to this one. A lot of pattern, a lot of stuff happening in the shirt, a lot of colors in a in a yellow leather skirt and i'm like yes (laughs) like that's i think leading with okay what type of event is this and then how funky can we get do i have to dial it back because i can we can be classy right if i don't have to be then i won't be Um, (laughs) because that's just my personality um so yeah just leading with okay where are we going who do i have to talk to and what do i have to talk about Mm -hmm. if this is something, and then what am I promoting? Because if I'm promoting the first purge, that is definitely a, a more political driven conversation. Right. Um, it's, it's not as funky as promoting Superfly. Right. So I want still being me and still doing that expression and that self-expression that I've talked about earlier, but I want to make sure that I'm appropriate for the occasion. And so that's a conversation with the stylist that we can, we we tend to lead with. And then from there, I'm pretty open. Like I'm, I kind of like seeing whatever the stylist brings to the table and like, okay, cool. So what do we have given all of this back, this backstory, this information, what are the options? And then we can start editing from there and mix matching and, and doing all of that. I think that's good because inside my course, I have a list of questions that are appropriate that you need to ask before you even go into a job. So that's why I like to ask that question um, up front. So the next question we have is, well, we already talked about that. What advice would you give someone who's interested in styling an actress? So how would they get in contact or what would you say is the best route? in order to get in contact with an actress? Styling them for their personal or styling both. actress? Let's do both. Okay. Um, well, styling on set, and I'm 100% sure Antoinette probably answered this way better than I can, but <laughs> um, that's, that's a different union setup. You have, to, you have to actually be part of a union to even gain access to be a costume designer for television or film. Right. Um, And it's a different union than I, my union as an actor. So I I don't have the specific information on that, but that is the approach you you have to, if, if you're not in the union, your best bet is to, you know, kind of assist or understudy the costume designer. Um, There's ways that someone like Antoinette can have her assistants who are still trying to get involved, but just them being on set and working and having actual paperwork saying that they were on set um, can give them basically official documents to allow them to be eligible to be in the union later. Mm-hmm. So it's like putting in your hours for any type of license. Um, so that's that side of it. For styling actors in general, um, personally, I think the smartest, most effective way to do it, if you're not already cool with one or some, is publicists. Getting in with PR. um, Because the publicist is who is putting together your spec, the actor's spec shoots. And a spec shoot is like a test shoot, basically, just so you have some images for a electric kit or whatever. Um, So they're the ones who's facilitating, kind of producing photo shoots for the actor. Um, you'll start to develop relationships with those publicists. They have a wide variety of, of clients that at any moment they could be calling you to style. Um, anytime there's an award show or a big event happening in town or out of town, or sometimes mm-hmm. New York is the other, yeah. New York and LA pretty much is like the main stuff. But anytime something's happening, that publicist is gonna be looking for stylists. And then, right. There's only but so many that can go around, which is also a really good thing. You know, if you're in with a publicist, it's like, okay, who's too busy to stop? You know, this person already has five people. This already has five people for the same event. Okay, cool. So let's find somebody else who's available. So they always need it. Um, And I think that is the most effective way to do it. That's Um, great. Yeah. Yeah. Get in with the publicist. Yeah. 
That is great advice. Okay, I see you guys' questions. We have one more question for Lex before we jump into the Q and A. Um, so let's jump into the last one. What are you doing for quarantine? What is your zen? So, I'm <laughs> pregnant. <laughs> I'll start there. You can't I, even tell. <laughs> you can't. I have on a really big tee. This is an old Nicole Miller men's. Uh, like silky shirt by um and so i'm i'm in my i'm in my eighth month of pride i'm in, i'm eight months pregnant. okay I cannot even tell <laughs> thank you i still got cheekbones my nose ain't spread too much you know um <laughs> but no i so honestly my quarantine life has been a blessing in disguise um because i had been working and had planned on working until it was time for me to deliver right. um, and my two jobs both were aware of my pregnancy um i have been pregnant on like four four jobs total this whole time i've been working yeah. throughout this whole thing um but then the last two ironically got shut down the same day in march so i've been in quarantine since march and if it were not for that um i would still be working right now yeah and Hiding my stomach in my wardrobe. Wow. <laughs> That's another great topic. We could talk. We could come back and circle that part. Um, but yeah, so I've been relaxing. I've been I've been listening to God, and He's telling me to sit your ass down, and that's what I've been doing. I've been um, trying to stay healthy, trying to um, do everything I can for this baby boy in here, health wise, and nutrition wise and rest and yeah. and then now um, because I'm so close to my delivery it's been a lot of just getting his room together mm -hmm. um, trying to just make way for the make way for a baby um, but it, that's per more on the personal side but work wise I still been able to the, even though the industry has been shut down and it should soon open um, let us pray that just came out uh, a couple days ago that they're thinking about reopening um, Hollywood. But I have was able to still keep in contact with both jobs, um, both writers' rooms, trying to figure out like, okay, what do we do when we come back to work? When can we come back to work? How does this affect um, when the shows or film will air? Um, just trying to figure that out. So it's been a lot of these, a lot of these Zoom meetings and chats and email chains, um, trying to, everybody's just, everyone doesn't know what to do. Everyone's, this is new for everybody, the entire world. So we're all just trying to keep in contact, but keep momentum so we don't just like fizzle out. Like we got to make sure we come back hard and what's the game plan, especially because now you're really really you're about to deliver so if we come back soon what does that mean for your delivery do we hold you off until august or do we you know so there's been a lot of that type of talk um i've also have been able to finish something i've been trying so hard to to finish for so many years now which is a pilot which is writing a pilot so i finally wrote my own pilot and designed my own pitch deck and that's like a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. And again, that's why I say this is a blessing in disguise. Like I know a lot of us in here are artists. A lot of us sometimes have trouble staying on task or just saying like, I want to do this thing and actually putting forth the work and the effort to get it done. Yes. Um, so this forced us to sit and be in our own little bubble and figure out like, okay, what could I be working on right now? What needs to okay. get done? Do I need to clean my garage out? Yes, I do. Let me get that done. Do I need to write a pilot? Yes, let me get that done. So <laughs> we've had um, ample amount of time to put our money where our mouth is. We should be all coming out of this with something, some type of business plan, some type of goal, some next steps, like some meetings set up. Like, what are we doing when this when the world opens back up? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's so important. And um, anybody that's in here that wants to be a stylist, I have been saying for a while, this is the time where I think it's best for you to tap into your craft. If you've been procrastinating, trying to figure out how to do it and you don't know how to, I do have a course where I teach that information and also a book. Um, my journey started off as an intern, assisting, mentorships, 
I styled with Lex and I styled for New York Fashion Week, Under Armour, all these different things, athletes. So it allowed me through that experience and mentorship to figure out exactly how to do certain things, the knowledge that I needed. And now it's time, I feel, to provide that information for you guys. So if you want any more information on that, I will drop that information in the chat. Um, and I want to thank Lex so much for being here. Thank you for having me, thanks. <laughs> and also, I want to make sure that I do tap into some of the questions that we have for you. I think it's only one or two. So let me scroll up. Okay, so I think she kind of tapped in on this, but let's touch it again. It says, how do celebrities select, find their stylists? Do they stick with the same stylist or do they change them up for different events and cities? Great question. Yes. Um, so again, I think finding the stylist also just goes back to like whether you might just know them already. Um, like me and Marie have known each other for years. Um, and then my publicist also brought in a handful of stylists too. Right. So I've been um, able to work with a lot of different people. And yeah, sometimes, sometimes people stick with the same person. Sometimes like me, you can't always stick with the same person because again, if, if a stylist is way too busy, <laughs> it might be better for you to you know, find somebody else or if they have too many clients for that particular event, or if your event is in Miami, if your event is in New York or wherever it is, you have to, you know, you want to find somebody there. Mm -hmm. um, granted, again, you don't have to. I know there's plenty, plenty of um, entertainers who stick with their main person and, and how that works. Sometimes if the, if the stylist can't travel with them, they'll travel the clothes with them. And I've had that happen with me too, um, which is also a, a cool option. It's just something you have to make sure you get all your fittings and everything done before that person flies out of town and then you would just ship the clothes with them and then when they come back they'll give them back to you um so yeah so it is it's kind of fluid um i don't think anyone should feel obligated to anybody um just like with with any anything with whether it's your nail person your your barber your hairstylist <laughs> your makeup artist like you should be able to kind of just just feel everybody out and for me I kind of just think it's dope to just just mash with different people um I yeah. think that's pretty cool too giving everybody an equal opportunity um to you know sometimes I have like a handful of makeup artists that I kind of just bounce back and forth between because I want everybody to shine I want everybody to win and if it's something I know I'm gonna be presented on or printed on or whatever it's like cool let me hit up this person so they can get on this job too because this is you know I want to make sure I'm looking out for people as right. well and, and getting a cool mix in so yeah it's definitely very fluid um it, it's fluid it I don't feel obligated to stick with just one yeah, person don't feel bad because I think it's a great idea for different artists um entertainers in general to bounce around and get different feels because sometimes when you're shooting, whether it be content, test shooting, um, or just personal style, you know, sometimes you want to mix it up. Like for Lex, she has so many different styles. So I think it's definitely a great idea to bounce around, get different content, get different ideas. Um, and as a stylist, as far as reaching out to people, um, like she said, a publicist, but also just making sure that you have the resources in order to reach out to directors, producers, other styles who may be doing the type of styling job that you want to do so that you can work with them and then begin to network because that's what all this is, is based off relationships and networks that you have um, that will continue to help you grow in the industry. Yep. So let's go to the next question. I live in Upper Mount. Okay, this is Aaliyah. I'm sorry. And that last person that we answered that question to was Bree. Hey, Bree. <laughs> so <laughs> the next person is Aaliyah. And she says, I live in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, and I recently graduated graphic design and a big fan of Lex's work. Oh, okay. I thought that was a question. That wasn't a question. Thank so. you. <laughs> Hi, Leah. <laughs> and congratulations. Okay, here's a Q&A. Um, okay, so this one is... Um, to kind of answer that one how do you find the PR and what's the best way to connect with them so I would actually uh we want to do that or we both can do it 
You both can. You go ahead. What were you going to say? Um, as far as PR relationships, there are definitely different um, places that you can look online if you don't have the personal rela relationships to. Um, and then also when you're networking with either a stylist or trying to get into this industry, it's a little bit different than personal styling. So you definitely have to know the network and resources in order to reach out to them. It can be a director or producer or another stylist that you would reach out to. Um, there are also lists of databases with different um, agencies that have, you know, a list of different stylists, makeup artists, anything that you can think of. And another website that I use is called Production Paradise, um, which I'll also leave in the chat and later I'll leave in an email. But um, a lot of this does come down to research and putting yourself out there. If you're not doing that, it's, it's going to be hard to find it. Or if you want to cut out some of that time having a mentor or somebody who has those resources that can provide that information for you. What would you say, Lex? Um, it's the same. I actually want to piggyback off of the agency part because, yeah. again, a lot of the publicists, they're heavily connected with the agency. Right. And not, not just actor agencies, but like makeup artists, hair, right. stylists, all of, they, all of those type of people also have representation. And mm -hmm. when you have that, it does make it a little bit easier for you to get connected because right. you've already presented yourself to this agency. They trust your work. They love what you do. All it takes is word of mouth from that agent to that PR. Um, right. And then from there, you know, just it can kind of just keep unfolding. Because once you start with one person, who kind of bounces off? Yeah, if you're with, if you got someone who's really dope and they got a platform and they got an audience, or or their your look on them was seen somewhere, right. somebody's gonna ask that person who their stylist was. Right. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And then from that point, they'll just keep sharing your information. Um, I've definitely shared Bree's information several times, um, and, and a few other stylist friends too yeah because people come to me like hey i need to even men come to me like hey you know a stylist for, i know my friend over here needs a stylist for blah 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 and so they, people will ask me so it's word of mouth um also now with the heavenly social media right <laughs> post and you like their outfit they're nine times out of ten they're gonna tag who styled them right go and stalk the hell out of that stylist <laughs> and then that's how you get that's how you get connected so um again it really just takes like one if you if you get like one dope person even if it's just a test you even if yeah. it's just a test testing you, that's so important yeah like social media is is uh, comes in handy in that regard because even if it's not for nothing they're going to post it and they're going to tag you and if the and people who are following like what they see they're gonna they're gonna get interested but in terms of like the bigger, you know, more established opportunities, um, I think that figuring out the agencies, getting in good with them, or or just if you want to just do your own independent thing, right? Figure out who's who's publicist um, is who. How do you contact them? Emails are real easy to find, especially publicists. Right. Um, even manager emails are really easy to find. So if it's someone you're interested in styling just reach out to their team. Not really the person so much. You could, but so it's tricky. way more effective when you reach out to the team. Right. And again, before you even do all of that, you do need to decide the type of stylist that you want to be. Yeah. And you also need to have content in order to even reach out to these agencies or these managers or anyone. They need to see the type of work that you're providing before they will even let you work with someone else or even assist because they want to know that you have something to bring to the table and they're not just, you know, trying to get information. They want to know that you're a valuable part of the team too. So content and testing are definitely key things that you need to do before you can even start reaching out to a client or to an agency or PR. And with testing, that can that can be as easy as hitting up your friends. Yeah. Figuring out who, yeah. like, even, if your friend is, yeah, like, <laughs> even if your friend isn't a model or whatever, it's like, cool, let me just put some clothes on you and let's find a photographer and let's let's make it happen. And that can start to build your portfolio just so someone can see like, oh, okay, you have taste. Right. You have a sense of color palette. Okay, these are all good. <laughs> the clothes fit. That's good. You know, um, they definitely need to see something. That, whether it's the entertainer, 
needs to be able to trust what you can do or their team um, needs to be able to trust what you can do. So definitely, if you don't know where to start, I think those test shoots are a really, really good place to start. Absolutely. I remember we had some fun ones, especially in New York. Yeah. <laughs> Though the our New York shoot, we did this New York shoot, y'all. Um, <laughs> we did so many, but we did this New York shoot that I had like this gold number, and <laughs> yeah, it was just like I don't know. But the picture was so dope at the time. Right now, it's dating. <laughs> at the time it was really dope that I put that photo on a business card. Let now this has to be old because actors don't use this. We don't. But at the time, I didn't have I didn't have shit, right? I didn't have a manager. I didn't have an agent. All I had was student credits. So <laughs> I had to find my own hustle. And similar to what y'all talking about in here, like you just got to figure out where to start. Right. I used that picture, Bree Style, on my business card. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and I think I, someone found it recently and sent me a picture and texted it to me. Like, look what I just found. I was like, Lord. Embarrassing. That was probably Humble. with the gold hair too, wasn't it? Humble beginnings, huh? That was with the gold hair, wasn't it? Or the blonde hair? The blonde hair, yep. Yeah, the blonde hair, I remember that. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Aww. I just got a, a milkshake delivery from my incredible <laughs> husband. <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> and Fat Burger. <laughs> and the vegan shakes that they have over there are bomb. Y'all, this eight months of pregnancy, just forgive me. But, yes. Okay, guys, with so that, it sums up our whole little webby today. Again, if you want information on the course or the book or how to get in contact with me, I've left my information in the chat. It's brewisestyle.com. And today we had Lex on here, my sis. Yay. And again, thank you. I love you so much and appreciate you for doing this. I love you too. Congratulations on everything. And I can't wait to meet my little nephew. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you and congrats to you too like what you're doing is incredible this webinar oh my God, thank you sorry, she, you were the one who pushed me to do this so <laughs> thank you we thank gotta look you. out we gotta look out yeah thank you so much yeah all right guys <laughs> i see your mom on here hi <laughs> miss lane oh my mom is on here hey mom <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody. I'll call you later. Love you. <laughs> Love you too. All right.